and welcome to Syngenta's bit of communication about growth degree days. So we're going to have a little look at what growth degree days are, what we can do to help you, how you can use them the best way possible to get the best out of your products. Are growth degree days? Well, growth degree days are a way of using the temperature to translate that into a simple figure to help you determine your application windows between products. So what we have here is the temperature through a period of the day. So starting at midnight, running all the way through to the end of the day, you can see how the temperature has fluctuated. And this is a kind of typical June, July day where your minimum overnight temperature is around 10 degrees and your maximum temperature is around 21. And there you go, you can see we're 22 degrees max temperature and 11 degrees minimum temperature. Now what growing degree days do is it's a simple formula that takes those two figures and puts them into a basic equation. So it takes the minimum temperature, the maximum temperature, adds them together, divides them by two to give you a mean temperature for the day, which in this case is 16.5 degrees. then minuses a base figure away, which in this situation is six degrees. Now the normal base temperatures you'll come across are zero degrees, six degrees and 10 degrees. Uh, they're used in around the world. So warm season grasses, cool season grasses, different climates. Uh, a lot of the guys in the States will use zero and 10 degrees, uh, whereas we'll use six degrees. And the base temperature really is the temperature at which you think there will be some growth establishing. So there'll be something happening. And in this situation in the UK, we tend to use six degrees. So about six degrees, so you minus that off there, which is giving you in this situation, a growth degree day figure of 11.5. Now, the reason this is important is we have a variety of climates across the UK and we've got quite a wide range of weather conditions. Um, so what you have here is all the growth degree days plotted for all of 2019 for Paul down on the south coast. I use Paul because it's one of the best areas in the country for growing grass. It's always got the highest growth degree day figures that I find. And you can see throughout the year that varies. It gets warmer and it gets colder. To think that one application window all the way through the year would be the right period of time to apply products and get the best out of them is probably a bit misguided. So we can adjust our application windows tighter or wider, depending on the temperature. The warmer it is, the more it's going to be using products, the tighter you want to bring things together. The cooler it is, the further you can separate them apart. What we have here is St Andrews up in the north. This is where I thought we'd probably have some of the cooler temperatures because it is so far north. And you can see it is lower than Paul, definitely lower. And you can see there's an interesting comparison. So to think one set of application windows would work the same as St Andrews as it would down in Paul, probably not going to work. So you've got to look for a slightly different methodology to help you apply and get your timings correct. And as a last case, I went to Bingley, which is our research centre in the middle of the country in Yorkshire. Um, so STRI do a lot of work for us there. We currently have a trial going on looking at growth degree day windows and Primo applications. And actually, it turns out it's one of the coldest places in the country. And you can see that when you overlap all of these, this data together. So here you go, all of those three venues overlapped over each top of each other. And you can see there is this common theme that Paul is a much warmer climate, much more growth than St. Andrews and Bingley sits in underneath that. So when we're comparing application windows across the country and we're looking to get the very best out of products, it makes complete sense that we should probably shouldn't be doing it on a calendar window because 14 days in Paul is going to be very different to 14 days in Bingley and it's going to be very different at different times of the year. And you can see when you accumulate all of those figures and pile them on top of each other and add them up over a period of year, how they are very, very different. So you're going to get a much longer period of growth, sustained growth down in Paul than you are in Bingley. So 
that only makes logical sense that you would use less products in certain areas because you've got less periods of growth and it's all about getting those timings correct. Now it's particularly useful for products like Primo Max. Uh, we've done a lot of work on growth degree days, particularly in the States, on timing Primo Max really well by using growth degree days and it works particularly well with Primo because you have one active ingredient and you have what is generally some fairly consistent growth patterns through the period you'd be using it. So you're not trying to use it at the far end of the year where it's really, really cold and you haven't got different actives in there that are going to respond slightly differently. What you've got is one active ingredient in there that is very driven on its longevity by temperature. So using growth degree days for Primo is a really good idea. And what we're trying to achieve with a growth degree day based application is varying your gap between your applications. So that might be anything from kind of 35, 40 days all the way down to kind of 14 days. And you're looking to do that because the product is going to last a variable amount of time in variable temperatures. And you can see that here, this is an ideal hypothetical growth degree day based application. And what we've achieved is this really consistent smooth line. And assuming that's what we're aiming for, which I think most people are on putting surfaces particularly, is this consistent level of growth, this consistent reduction, and you do that by staggering your windows. What we're not trying to do is use it on a set calendar application, because if you've got set calendar applications, you start to get through the cooler periods, this kind of overlapping. So you get them laying on top of each other. It hasn't run out properly yet. So you get additional growth suppression through cooler periods. Then as you warm up, you get less growth suppression and you might even get gaps in there. So you move more towards this kind of thing where you have inconsistent growth and you're, you can make things worse with the Primo as far as your levels of growth regulation go. You'll still probably improve plant health, but what you'll be doing is seeing inconsistencies, making it really hard for you to manage because you'll either have to up your management regimes to achieve what you want or reduce them, or it will bring on additional stresses that you weren't kind of ready for. So looking to growth degree day models to help you improve your timings is really why we put it in place. So what we have here is a fairly extreme day temperature wise. Same kind of map, same kind of graph. We're trying to pick out um, the temperatures here throughout the day. So starting early on, you're at kind of two degrees, dropping down to around freezing at seven o'clock in the morning. But by two o'clock in the afternoon, we're up to 13 degrees. Now, the reason I've pulled this one out is because it explains quite well how our model works. And uh, we use the traditional growth degree day calculator to work things out, but there's a slight variation in the way this one works. The traditional model will take that minimum temperature of zero, that maximum temperature of 13. Into the equation we looked at earlier, giving us an average of 6.6. You take away your base temperature in this situation, that would be six, giving you 0 0.6 growth degree days. That's how the standard equation works. Is we've taken we've taken the computer power that we've got behind the scenes to work out those growth degree days on every hour. So every hour it breaks it down into a 24 hour period and every hour our system is going to look at that and it's going to look at the minimum temperature, the maximum temperature and work out the hour, work out the average temperature for that hour and then it works all that up and works out exactly where the growth degree day is. For that day. Now this is particularly important because in some areas you're going to see some extremes of climate where you may hit low temperatures but you're not there for very long. Situation: We were down at these lower temperatures for around 10 and a half hours and we were up in these higher temperatures for around 13 and a half hours. Now it doesn't make a huge amount of difference in reality. You might see a couple of days either way but it's worth explaining because if you look at your traditional model work that you may have done in the past and the figures you record you may start to see a slight difference um, particularly if you're around the coast we, we don't find the temperatures sit as low 
and as long around the coastal areas. So this model should work out much better for you guys. So in this situation, uh, the Greencast model threw up 1.9 growth degree days, the traditional model threw up 0.6 growth degree days. It doesn't make massive differences, but it is worth understanding and explaining how our system works. So if we have a look at how we access the uh, growth degree day tool that we are working on and we have developed, if you go into Greencast, you'll find it under the Greencast tools. Uh, there's a load of tools in there that are worth looking at. There's our weather, system there's the disease information there's our digital fungicide planner uh, all sorts of things in there that are worth having a look at but today we're going to look at growing degree days you only click on that um, if you are not logged into Greencast it will take you to our default setting which is Bingley the STRI research station in the middle of the country um, if you are logged in, then you can register your own address and every time you go on it, it will take you to your default setting. So assuming your default setting is in there, you can have a good look at the data you've got. Now, if you want to change that to have a look around, that you can do as well. So if you want to have a little nosy to see how your friends in different areas of the country see what sort of levels of growth they're getting, make a bit of a competition of it, um, have a good look around. I think it's fascinating. If you've got your location set, you will... It will default show up the last 30 days. Uh, you can adjust that around to do different things and to look at different periods. Um, but the default setting is to show you the last 30 days. So you have a high temperature and the low temperature. We've worked out to be the growth degree days for that period. So each day will then have a growth degree day figure associated to it. Year to date growth degree day figure. So that's the whole year accumulated. Now, the base temperature is the temperature we spoke about earlier. Really important to get this right. As a rule, I'd say use six degrees in the UK, but you will find some people use zero degrees or 10 degrees. If you're looking at any research, if you're looking at anything else anyone's talking to you about, make sure you know the base temperature because it does make a big difference and there isn't an easy correlation between the two sets of figures. Range as well. So you can go back all the way back to the beginning of last year. So you can look at all of last year's data, all of this year's data as it goes on, and you can apply different date ranges to have a look at different periods. Really interesting to go back into last year and look at your programs and see just how it was and then see if you can correlate what you were seeing last year against your programs. Maybe there's opportunities to improve that. This is where it gets good. This is where we're hoping to save you some time. Um, there's a threshold progress button in here so you can set your own thresholds. So if you click on that, there's a screen where you can enter your name and the venue that you want to be checking your settings and thresholds for. Now your email address is really important, that needs to go in, it needs to be absolutely correct because you will get notifications when you reach your, get close to your threshold. So get the correct email in there, the one that you want the, the um, threshold warnings coming to. Enter your postcode for the venue you want to set. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, you can only set one postcode. You can set five different thresholds, but they're all for one postcode, so for one venue. Old name, so in this situation, I was doing some um, work with the STRI for the trial we're doing up there on um, growth regulation. We're looking at 50 growth degree day models. So I set up a, a threshold window for Primo Max, 50 growth, growth degree days. That's just the title of it. You can call it what you can call it. Jim's spraying opportunity if you want. If your name's Jim and you're looking for a spray opportunity. Date, uh, when you want it to start, you can backdate this. So if you just log in on now and you did your last application around the 1st of April, you can set that for then and it will work it out from that. Base temperature, I would advise going for six, but just have a think about what you want to do. So what are you trying to hit? Now, thresholds are an interesting thing. 150 growth degree day model is a really good window for Primo applications. In the summer, that works out most places through the peak of the summer around 14 days. Um, so it's a good one to work from. But you find something that works for you. You've got to find something that works and something that gives you the long, the, the periods of time that you can realistically get a sprayer out periods of control you're looking for 
this is, gives you a really good opportunity to start playing with Growth Degree Days and seeing what works for you. And when this is all set up, run out, you you set this up to either reset to zero and start again, or um, just stop and be done. So that's down to you. Now, personally, the whilst the reset to zero is a great idea and it's lovely, I think it's very rare that you'll really regularly hit your growth degree day window spot on. Um, it generally, if you're aiming for a specific figure, it will always fall on a day where it's raining, you've got a shotgun going off, or you are it's a weekend or your sprayer is off sick um, there, there's always a reason why it doesn't work so it's worth just going back into here and resetting it every time you need a new threshold setting just down the bottom of the screen that then saves all of that and what you'll get is a notification through to your email when you hit 80 percent of that target so assuming you want to go with 100 growth degree day window when it hits 80 you will get an email saying you're 80 percent towards your target be ready um, and then you'll get another one on the day that you hit it so you're aware so in conclusion growth degree days they're a really useful tool but they're not everything they have limitations and they're a really useful guide to give you an indication of your spray windows uh, altering how you can spray alter your spray windows to get the very best out of products uh, but they do have limitations um, we're trying to improve on some of those with our improved modeling but they're not perfect but they are a good guide they're a really useful guide to help you out be very aware of base temperature i hear a lot of people talking about 200 growth degree days or some research they've seen and it's really important for that to be valid you understand what the base temperature for that study was um, without that the figures are pretty meaningless We've tried to set this thing up to be as easy as possible for you to use. We've reduced the amount of bells and whistles in there. We've kept it very simple um, with simplicity. Hopefully you can use it and it will help you out. Get that main screen once you're logged into Greencast, just set it as your kind of default on your browser so that every time you go on, you can just have a look at your site and see how it's ticking along without really ever having to do any work. Set those thresholds so that you get a notification and you can start looking for those spray windows try to keep it really easy try to save you the time of entering the data entering the data is it's not that challenging but and I know a lot of people are doing it if you've got your own systems out there that are working for you and it's not time consuming brilliant you, you stick with it um, this is really set up for those people that I guess are like me when I was a golf course manager who loved the idea of it want to work with it but would always forget to enter the data and then all of a sudden you haven't done it for five six days and it's a job that's bigger than it needs to be if you're super organized and you've got a system you, you stick with your system however we're trying to simplify it and make it easier for people who are not quite on top of things like you guys are uh, the modeling is really accurate. It's slightly different to the traditional model that people are using at the moment um, but It shouldn't make that much difference at all In fact, it will make a difference to those sites that have the kind of slightly unique climates where they're coming out of those cold temperatures a bit quicker And really all I want to end with is growth degree day is there as a tool. It's a useful guide um, but it's really all about trying to get the very best out of the applications um, for you these products are you know that they're, they're important products and it's critical we get the most out of them there is labor intensive to put them down you want to put them down at the right time to get the very best out of them and we've tried to set this up to make life a little bit easier for you. so there you go there's growth degree day um, hopefully as simple as we can make it we've really tried to simplify how we get the data to you. If you've got any questions, please drop me an email at glenn.kirby at syngenta.com. Um, follow me on Twitter, follow the team on Twitter, um, or check out my blogs. Stay safe and uh, take care.